it your favorite co and we have you covered with plenty of sports content on this your favorite show or as dan and dago's like to say your favorite program the nfl season has hit one of the slowest points of the off season but we still have plenty of nfl coverage in our rapid fire segment in our certified compose segment we get into our favorite snacks and treats with the flaming hot movie set to stream on hulu this weekend all of that plus our usual burial of the weekend una mas segment with Dan and Dago and Victor Producer, that reminds me, Hilberto, don't you have a question for our viewers and or listeners? I, I guess I do. You know, like you mentioned, it's a slow period on the NFL calendar. I don't want to reach for NFL content, and we have plenty on the show, so we'll get to it. And you talk about snacks and hot Cheetos. And by the way, are we sponsored by Hulu here? Hopefully Hulu wants to sponsor us. But uh, <laughs> you know what? Let's kind of tie it in because summertime is baseball time. I won't watch too many baseball games, but I like to attend baseball games. And people are going out to the ballpark right now and speaking about snacks. So the question is a little different here. Engagement question of the week. Give me your favorite Ooh. ballpark meal because for your boy right here, I need some nachos. Nachos. Some, some Dodger dogs what? and a giant cup what? of michelada uh, of uh, Modelo for sure. And the, it's going to cost you like $25, but that's okay. It's a different story. It's really expensive. But give me give, give me your perfect ballpark meal when you and say you're going to get those Dodger tickets, those Angel tickets, whatever it is. Let me know what you're going to get in the comments. If you're in the audio, get to the comments as always. And let your boys right here, the compas, know what you're taking at the ballpark. The Padres have nachos with cheese they have brisket on top with barbecue sauce on top of that Ooh. those are delicious you need to get some of those those are those are some of the best but uh a guy who knows all about the ballpark and being a baseball lover is dan and dago let's go to him now welcome one welcome all to another glorious wednesday it is not only one day closer to the weekend it is not only Hump day, but it is the day that your favorite program, Comas on the Beat, drops its new episode. How you doing? Keep it moving. But also, the other thing you should know: do not forget to go out and check Comas on the Beat merch.com. Go out there. We got amazing. We got hats. What we got shirts. What we got hoodies. What we got stickers. What we got graphic tees. We do it all. We got it all. So do not forget to go to comasonthebeatmerch.com. Go over there and check it out. And also, if you want a one-stop shop for all your all the content on your favorite program, Compass on the Beat, do not forget to check out the website, comasonthebeat.com. It has all the content you want of the episodes. How do we do it all here? We're men of many tools. We have many trades. We do it all here on your favorite program, Compass on the Beat. But anyway, enough of the dilly dally, Dan and Dago. It's time to get to the best damn program in all the universe. From all the way across the hallway, play the music, Nando! Welcome to Combats on the Beat. I'm Fernando Ramirez. I cover the Chargers for the Sporting Tribune. With me, as always, my co-host, my tag team partner, Gilbert Manzano, who covers the NFL for Sports Illustrated. What's up, bro? One day, Fernando, I'm going to fall out of my seat when I hear that and just uh, have a nice little video going there. But uh, I'm, I'm doing well. You know, you, know what, you know what's up, Fernando? Uh, I just realized, and it's been a long time since I had like a, a full-on suit. You know, it is wedding season. And actually... It's the first time I'm going to like a legit. Well, I went to a wedding actually. What was it last week's show? But it's another wedding coming up in June. And before last week, I haven't been to a lot of weddings. And that one, it wasn't like a big wedding for me. So I didn't really like dress up fully in a, in a full suit there, you know, with the jacket, the, you know, the, you know, what is, going what to the tailor. What, what do they have to do for Gilbert Manzano to? think that it's a legit wedding yeah i know right uh i'm not there's the a Rambo. criteria just like your top 10 on, on combat combos make sure you guys go check it out <laughs> there is i guess there's a there's uh it has to it has to meet certain criteria for it to be a legit wedding in your opinion hey, if i don't if i don't know anybody and the only person oh, okay, I know is, uh, it's caroline then uh that's not a legit wedding for me <laughs> hopefully they don't watch the show here but yeah you know i got uh you know got i got my my suit i got fitted went to a tailor uh and then also yeah i i I kept telling myself, okay, the wedding is in June, middle of June. I got to lose some weight before I go see the soup place. And, uh, okay, you know what? Just give me a little a little more room around the, the waist just in case. But, uh, you know, it was a little adventure. It, it, it was kind of 
you know, I feel like people who watch the show, I'm like, why are you complaining about the wedding? Uh, the other friend now, he, he sent me to uh, all the way to what is it West Covina. So it was a far drive. I get there, you know, they, they, I got to get measured up, you know, all that stuff. So that was a quiet experience to go to go into. Uh, the I feel like wedding at? Uh, actually, I, don't, I think like Baldwin Park or something. But I feel like nowadays like, you get everything from home, like even like the measuring stuff. You could probably stand in front of an app and figure it out. But it was very old school, and it was kind of like, oh, okay, I haven't done this in a minute. People lie with their measurements. <laughs> until it's to actually put the suit on. <laughs> the, the, uh, the person put a jacket on me. I'm like, oh, you know, I could fit this. And, she, and she's like, nah, you probably can't. I'm like, wow, thanks for just, you're just shattering gonna of, my confidence. You're going to hit one of these, and then boom, it's going to rip. <laughs> it's like a butt you know, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so when's the wedding? June? Uh, June 17th. I think Victor reminded me. It's Glendale. I don't even think that's right, but I believe you more than I believe myself. So <laughs> Glendale it is June seventeenth. Oh, dude! You know what I hate? I hate having to go to a wedding and carry the suit with you on the plane. Having to do it like uh, my cousin got married a couple of years ago in Mexico City, and I remember we had to go get fitted for Texas here in TJ. Then we flew with the suit and everything down there. And then you know when you throw your suitcase back in, you just throw everything back in. You don't care the suit had to go back into the thing and we had to carry it. It was just annoying. You had to wear but, the suit uh, on the plane? Huh? You had to wear every, the tux on the plane? No, 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 no. You have it like on a little hanger. Oh, yeah, and yeah, because you don't want to mess yeah, it up. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I, exactly. I told you how I don't really travel with a suit. Yeah, no, no, it's it's like those kind of <laughs> I used destination wedding. That I think about when I used to wear a lot of uh, the the jacket on for when I was doing stuff for the Las Vegas Review Journal, and I needed to take my my suit jacket, I would just stuff it in my backpack, and people would be like, "What are you taking out of your backpack? You just stuff it in there?" I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> so, uh, that shows you that I'm an amateur." <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty funny. You know, this weekend I honestly like I didn't do much. All I did was catch up. So I saw uh, I was I was going through Instagram. And one of my friends, uh, she was with her mom walking and everything. And she's like, oh, yeah, they started talking about uh, a show. Well, does he end up with her? Does he end up with her? And I'm like, what show are they talking about? Ramirez, does he end up with her or not? And I'm like, Ramirez. And then she's like, oh, my mom's trying to find out if uh, if on Manifest, if so. I'm like, Manifest <laughs> already came back. I'm like, shoot. So I started watching Manifest. Wait, another season? I didn't it's the last, the last one. It's the last one. So there's no, been no, no, it's two. combined. It's combined. Yeah. Uh, they, remember they oh, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's the last, it's the last season of uh, Manifest. Okay, I started no, watching it. No spoilers. It, it's gotten pretty good. So I'm I'm excited about it. Uh and then the flash just came out. So it's the last season of the flash. I wanted to watch it. The flash, like you have to be on acid to watch some of the crap that they're pulling. Like, there's <laughs> superheroes, and I'm like, or super villains, and I'm like, who the hell is this guy? Like, what the hell is this crap? So, uh, I mean, it's gonna, it's interesting, but I just kind of caught up on shows, um, hung out with, uh, uh, hung out with, uh, Dan and Dago, obviously, uh, chilling for, for a little bit, but, uh, but yeah, no, I definitely caught up some, on some shows, uh, got to hang out and I don't really, I don't really catch up on shows like that. So I caught up on some shows, you know, what Dan and Dago starting to like that 70s show. So I think that's going to be his next show that he watches. You guys are so late with that, but I'm glad. You I know. I, I never, I had never watched. Dude, Red is hilarious. He's like, <laughs> he's just, he's like, he, like Red, it was like my, you're talking about my son. My son is a great kid. He's a great human being. Oh, dad, shut up, dumbass. <laughs> I'm like, dude, that is the best. So I definitely, uh, I definitely you, love, uh, I definitely love that show. You know what I kind of like? like and also dislike about this this time of year and nfl calendar where it's pretty slow you get to you know watch that on tv and get to binge yeah. and catch up and then you get you get to enjoy your weekends but then in the back of your mind you're like oh i'm about to lose you're this kind of comfort yeah. feeling in a month and a half so it's kind of like an uneasy feeling but you gotta enjoy it so yeah you're just chilling with your brother like that's like you gotta enjoy it right now you know well and the thing is that like i try and get all my like like wednesday thursday and fridays i try and grind so that saturday i don't have to do anything Obviously, the one thing you have to do on Saturdays is wait for the stupid, uh, the like, oh, so and so has been downgraded out or all that stuff. So I mean, you have to wait for that and who they ascended and all that. But other than that, I mean, it's it's usually um, Saturday I try and grind so that Saturday I can chill. And then obviously Sunday it's a full. Like people don't understand, it's a full day event. Like I'm up at six thirty in the morning, head up to the stadium. In the past, I would pick up Gilbert and we drive to SoFi, and we'd be there till about. Right now, eight eight 
eight eight thirty, and then drive drop off Gilbert, and then drive home. So it's literally one of those things where it's an all day thing. Like you're there almost. Uh, you're there probably about 12, 13 hours. So all you know is that I can tell you everything about that stadium. I mean, I have it photogenically uh, in, <laughs> in my head. <laughs> so uh, definitely, uh, definitely some uh, interesting stuff. But uh, so your tux, what, what color is the tux? Is it just black? Uh, yeah, black. Yeah. Uh, no, I forget the color of the tie. It's like purple or something. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, That'll be interesting. But... But actually, you know, it'd be funny if one day in the future, you know, we get a Compass and the Beat Tux, you know, get a little Compass logo on it. Uh, For your wedding. Shop at CompassMerch.com. By the way, shout out to the, the website if you can. You know, check it out, CompassAndTheBeatMerch.com. We would love any support. Buy yourself a shirt, hat, hoodie, whatever it is. Alonzo uh, won the Fernando giveaway last week. So we still got plenty of stuff on CompassAndTheBeatMerch.com. Link in the description. It will go along with helping us out to go to a bunch of events and hopefully some events for the, the Compass coming this soon. Exactly. And folks, don't forget on What's Up, Bolts. If we get to a thousand, you are going to go on a lunch date with Dan and Dago. So that's going to happen. Sure, man, uh, that's going to happen. A thousand. And you get to go on, you get to hang out with Dan and Dago. So that'll definitely be, uh, that'll definitely be uh, uh, a good one. I think Gilbert's going to try and get into that one. Oh, yeah. He'd love sure. to get lunch with Dan and Dago for sure. But, yeah. uh, but regardless, <laughs> when he takes somebody out, I'm going to be somewhere hiding and see how it's going. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but um guys we're gonna do things a little bit differently so right now we're starting off with rapid fire whoa it's early okay pew, pew, pew. you can't even do it exactly. it's kind of early but i yeah, know we're, we're changing things up okay yeah I, I i need to change things i can't i have to keep you on your toes i'm not just gonna let you skate through this yeah, thinking oh it's uh it's time for certified code no, no no we're changing things up all right, i'm moving all right, things okay. around can't bury uh, them show, apparently who are your top seven quarterbacks going into the 2023 Dead period. I'm not gonna say 2023 the NFL season into the dead period of after mini yeah. camp. Are you trying to be funny for Alan? Because you know all I do is rank now. At, at, at that's all job. you do. Oh, okay. Hey, right. I okay. Honestly, I know you haven't been to all the stadiums, but I need a Gilbert Manzano to, uh, toilet or, or lavatory, best lavatories of the NFL. Like I, I, I need me something like that. Once, you once we what? get you to every single stadium, I want you to rank them all. Those are the type of stories that you save for a podcast, not to write them out. So you know what? I'll save the rankings one day on Compass and B, and I'll give you the, the, 10 best, the 10 best bathrooms. But the only thing will be kind of like maybe people won't care. Maybe they'll care about my opinion because it'll be mostly media bathrooms. So it won't be for the public. I can't really. There's some like a rate for the public. SoFi you know? has great bathrooms. <laughs> for the public. Well, uh, for the public, yeah. yeah. But, but for the media, you know, they'll. We'll, we'll get to it i don't want to talk too far about it but it is an idea <laughs> if you care about hearing uh my rankings around the nfl for bathroom stuff uh go ahead and leave a comment if you don't you feel like disgusting let us know too it's not uh, but yeah but yeah I, I do a lot of rankings but actually for now you got one right because i m when i was we doing turns at si um i didn't get quarterback so here you go i could share my list go ahead gilbert you know what uh, let's do this we'll both go you one two like well like you go first then i'll go then We'll do one, then two, or do you want to do seven? Ah, right, let's do that. Let's start off at seven. Okay. And move our way up. So you go first. All right. Uh, for me, Aaron Rodgers at number seven. And, you know, I'm not going to defend that he, you know, fell. I'm going to defend that he deserves to be top seven. That's how deep it is with quarterbacks now. Like, like this guy, you know, he's older and, and well, back-to-back -back MVP, the Kobe years. There you go, Fernando. Uh, mm -hmm. You can name the show if you want where you set that. Uh, but I think last year were – it was he had a lot of injuries and he didn't want to be there mentally. I think he might have a, a pretty big year with the Jets. I don't know if it's going to lead to ball games or winning ball games, but he's going to be pretty dominant. So that's why he has to be in my top seven still. Aaron Rodgers number seven. You have to read that story by the Athletic. I can't remember the guy's name, but he did a really good job on it. He talked about how he wanted good uh <laughs> fired uh, after yeah. last year, and it's a really good story by the Athletic. I, I can't remember the guy's name. He was on the uh, Rich Eisen show and he, he talked about the story yeah. and yeah, how Matt, he, Matt, he was a, Matt Schneidman. Yeah, he was surprised that Aaron Rodgers picked up uh, the phone when he called him. So it was interesting. Gilbert, I have Aaron Rodgers as number seven as well. I mean, I think it was a down <laughs> year last year. I think he's that phone number as well. <laughs> yeah, I think Garrett Wilson and him are going to develop a really good relationship. I think uh, they, the Jets have some weapons for him. I think they're going to – they brought in Alan Hazard. Uh, I think they're going to be good. And I actually I, – I like him. Uh, I like him, and I like the team moving forward. But I think Aaron Rodgers – is still one of the top quarterbacks in the NFL. Okay. Well, this is where we get a little different here. Uh, just to kind of speed it up. 
I like Trevor Lawrence at number six. I think you're a little different, but I think he, he gets ahead of Rodgers, which is still a big praise in the rankings here uh, on the Gilberto rankings uh, because I am the master at the rankings. But Trevor Lawrence proved a lot to me last year, but I still can't get the rocky rookie season out of my mind and the rocky first part of the second season. He took over the second part of 2022. He went off and big victory there uh, in the playoff game. Sorry, Dan and Diego. We'll see you later. But I still need to see more to put him a top five. Uh, I'm going to go with Josh Allen. I thought he had a really down year last year. Uh, I think I don't like that Buffalo still use him as a runner. I think they need to stop with that. If not, he's going to get he's going to get injured and it's going to be bad and he won't be able to get up. I thought without Brian Dable, he looked a little vulnerable. Uh, there's there's something there between him and Stefan Diggs that has even Trayvon Diggs saying that he, his brother could be a cowboy pretty soon. So there's some weird stuff going on there. So I, I don't know. I'm I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go. Josh Allen six. I, I there. He might have another down year if if he's not careful. Uh, yeah, I'll get to my Allen thoughts when I get to mine. But it might be a while. So you're a little surprised here. And then uh, number five for me, Jalen Hurts. Kind of the same thing with the Trevor Lawrence theme for my criteria here is like I need to see more body of work. But one big special year for him. The two were kind of rocky. Number two was pretty good for Hurts. He made the playoffs, right? But then three, he just took off, got that monster deal because of it, took him to the Super Bowl. So top five, Jalen Hurts, no problem with that for me. I have Trevor Lawrence at five. I think Trevor Lawrence showed some good stuff last year. I thought uh, I thought the, the game against the Chiefs, he could have done a little bit better. Uh, but there was a lot of drop passes. There was some weird stuff there. I'm just interested to see if they can, if they can redo what they did because last year they had a shitty schedule. And I'm wondering if now this year that they're going to have a, a, a harder schedule, if he's going to be able to, if they're going to be able to do what they did. Um, I don't know. I, I'm interested to see what's going to happen with him. But, uh, but as of right now, I have Trevor Lawrence at five. Yeah. No, that's oh, and good. he gets you got Calvin him. Ridley. Oh, yeah, that too. So you got him higher than I do, right? uh, Trevor Lawrence there. But then we we're in the, the same here. Might as well say you give your two cents. But uh, Justin Herbert, number four. It feels about right. Like, we really want to put this guy top three because he's such a very talented quarterback with zero playoff wins. It's kind of hard to do that. And then I still can't get the Jacksonville game out of my mind. But when it comes to talent, the only person that could probably compare is Patrick Mahomes. Like, the, the other guy we'll get to. But when it comes to just talent, simply talent, Herbert. Like, he's like my Trevor. He's like, uh, sorry, he's like my Terrence Crawford in boxing. He just passes yeah. the eye test, skills all over the world. I hope he doesn't turn out to be a Mike Trout where like home run, home run, home run Whoa. stats are there, but like no his favorite player, by the way, in baseball. Who? But Justin Herberts. Oh. Well, I mean, you know, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. I want to see this kid in the playoffs. I want to see him dominate. I want to see him doing uh things. And it's gonna be on the Chargers franchise to keep on giving him weapons. I mean, I mean, they they've done a good job with it so far. So you want to see him win. If he would have won that playoff game against Jacksonville, I probably would have had him right behind Mahomes. Um, but right now I have him at four. Uh, you, you just can't put them. I, I just can't put them in front of either one of these three guys that are coming up. So, but I think Justin Herbert, if this year, if, if that offense turns it on and Kellen Moore has a big year with this offense, I really do see, think that Justin Herbert could uh, catapult himself up. I mean, to me, J J uh, Patrick Mahomes versus Josh Allen, isn't the best matchup to me. It's Patrick Mahomes and, and Justin Herbert. To me, that I love that matchup. That's probably my number one quarterback match. Not even the Joe Burrow, Patrick Mahomes. To me, Justin wow. Herbert and Patrick Mahomes is the funnest one to watch, just because I think both guys are incredible, and I think they have uh, they have something different. Uh, but that's just me. Yeah. Okay. I think for this one, you might disagree. Uh, you will. Uh, and this is me where I'm going more with the body of work here. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. It was a so so, especially got beat down. Josh Allen got beat down by Joe Burrow in that divisional game. That was you see somebody, nasty. one of the players came out. If it wasn't snowing, we would have probably won. I'm like, what? yeah, no, you got your ass kicked. You man. were in Buffalo. Uh, but yeah, when it comes to like also talent, Josh Allen has it. When this guy just on his on another level on all cylinders, just clicking, Josh Allen is really he's really great. And he's he's had some playoff success. That's why I have to put him over Herbert. He's had some. I know it's it's a bad playoff game. And, and then I also too like he does a lot because he can't freaking run the football. He has to do it himself. So maybe if James Cook ascends and who else? They got Damian Harris, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe they figure From out something. Million dollars. Yeah. 
maybe they get Dalvin Cook. Go pair him with your brother there, and they they help out Josh Allen, take some pressure off. That's where the people don't are trying Miami, to don't let Miami go get him. <laughs> I know, right? A divisional rival. <laughs> Uh, and then that's why I was thinking, like, maybe they'll get D-Hop. Obviously, they got Leonard Ford. We don't know about that just yet. Uh, but he just does a lot. And I think he really was tired at the end of the last season. So I'm going to give him a benefit of the doubt, Josh Allen, number three. Josh Allen, I mean, and Vic is pointing at his elbow. I know he had that elbow injury. Yeah. But Josh Allen, to me, is a roller coaster ride. I mean, there's some points where he has it really good and then really good and then really bad. And then, like, he's just up and down, up and down. Like, you need to see more consistency from him, but I understand. I went with Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts took his team to the Super Bowl. They did not lose because of Jalen Hurts. And everybody's going to like the fumble. Yeah, the fumble didn't matter. I mean, the defense <laughs> didn't come to play. The defense didn't do what it needed to do. Jalen Hurts scored a game-winning, essentially what could have been a game, uh, game-tying game touchdown, obviously, uh, Mahomes and, and the Chiefs came up and still won the game, but Jalen Hurts did everything in his power to win that game and I thought he had a good, clean game. I thought he did everything he needed to do. Jalen Hurts is impressive, but now my question is, without Shane Steichen, what is this offense going to look like? And that's why I have my hesitations. I wanted to put Herbert at third, but with, that, with, with these next guys, they're all have been to the Super Bowl. Um, not the, uh, so I, I just couldn't put them above them, but, uh, but I had to put Jalen Hurts there at number three. Yeah, I'm not mad at it. I feel like for us last year, we went very hesitant going into the season about Jalen Hurts, and he just proved yeah. us wrong. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm a real dude, and I believe it. And then that Super Bowl just took me to another level of believing, like, yeah, I had the biggest stage, and you, you could perform like that. Yeah, they had a fumble, but other than that, like, he had him in contention and compete with He the got season. benched by two, for Tua Tunga Vailoa. He he had to leave to go to Oklahoma. At story. Oklahoma, there was questions about him. He got drafted second overall. The Eagles fans are pissed that he got drafted. We have Carson Wentz. Why do we need him? And look, he's the one that took you to the Super Bowl. Yeah, well, whenever you have that guy, things uh, tend to happen pretty well for you. And uh, but yeah, let me get to number. The Eagles will get DeAndre Hopkins. That's another sneaky team that I could see getting DeAndre Hopkins yeah. for some reason. I, I could see that. Yeah, could I have number three, you know? Yeah, maybe? yeah, yeah, Demonte yeah. Smith Demonte and, Smith and, and you have uh, A.J. Brown. Yeah, that should be a segment that's uh, sneaky. Like, if it keeps lingering for another week, like, sneaky things on my team. I don't team. believe I don't believe the Houston Texans that he wants to go back to Houston. Oh. That one, for some reason, I just can't believe it. Why? Don't you want to compete for a Super Bowl? Well, they have money. Maybe that's why. Hey, ah. open, up your, open up your checkbook a little more. and uh, uh, You know what? That's right. You're right. Yep. That's why I, I keep going back. Like, maybe it's not about money. I know we're going off topic. I mean, it's not about winning. It's more about money. Yeah. Uh, that's where we're going off topic. But uh, for me, uh, number two, two. Uh, I think it's a different level to the last two guys. Uh, yeah. Joe, Joe Burrow just took it to, took his game to another level, and he keeps getting better and better. Uh, and I like to call him the Cerebro Assassin, you know, from, like Triple H, because Triple H. when it comes to the head of games, man, this guy's a he's a standout chess player. And when he's on point, he's on point. He's a, he's deadly accurate, and he just like he, he commanded the offense. When you around that guy, man, you feel like a leader, like. Like everybody gets better, and he's a he's a great leader. He doesn't really talk that much either. It's kind of strange, but it's something about that guy just oozes confidence. Uh, and and like I don't want, like, the reason I, I compare him, like the way he has command is Drew Brees, but he's better than Drew Brees. Like am, like yeah, am I going too far? Maybe seeing like a Tom Brady kind of thing. Like he's not like Mahomes. Like Mahomes feels like, like man, right? Like, like right? Or something. Yeah, you're saying that he has a swagger and the command of Tom Brady in a sense. But that's such a high bar. So I don't want to. I don't know. Yeah. Somewhere somewhere that okay. If, if, if uh, there's a level between Brees and Brady, that's Joe Burrow. Okay. Uh, there you go, number two. Do you think Cincinnati's man? And I have I have Joe Burrow as my number two. Do you think Cincinnati management is kind of like, yay, we have Jamar Chase and Burrow? Shit, we have to pay Jamar yeah. Chase and Burrow. Like they're about to shell out yeah. top receiver money and top quarterback money. So that and that's coming up soon. That's why I thought maybe T Higgins would be available. But apparently, they're trying to pay him too. So good luck. That's gonna be, yeah, that's gonna be rough. I have Burrow a second. He went to the Super Bowl. He was uh, one bad play. Man, <laughs> Jamar Chase got open. He had burned Jalen Ramsey on that play. If if they're able to hold Aaron Donald a little bit, like half a second longer, he throws that up and Jamar Chase walks into the end zone. So, uh, it, it, but Burrow is uh, Burrow's tough. He's taking a lot of licks. They need to start protecting him. If not, he's not going to last very long. Just like his buddy down there in uh, in Miami. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah. So uh, but. I'm sure number one, we are also the same. Yeah, uh, when you win the Super Bowl and you're still playing at a high level, and, and I think for for Mahomes, like there was a whole narrative, like there's some doubt in him because he kept losing to Burrow and the Bengals. Like, okay, if Burrow wants to be number one, there's an opportunity, and and obviously Mahomes uh, did his job there to kind of put that notion away for at least for now. 
it's going to be a good rivalry there for years to come. But uh, when you combine the winning with the skill set, what else can you ask from Patrick Mahomes and uh, number one for sure? Yeah, no. So, I, I, I mean, he won the Zero Bowl. He did what he needed to do. Uh, so, obviously, you have to uh, – you have to go with him. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm with you. I, I think, uh, I think Mahomes is, uh, is the number one quarterback right now in, in the NFL. And I mean, he's done it. He's proven himself. And and now it's going to be interesting though, because now you're going to, now you're going to this new territory. I mean, he's going to be the hunted again. Uh, are they going to have a lull? Juju Smith Schuster's now gone. What's that receiver lo- room going to look like? The they interest me a lot uh, moving forward. By the uh, way, if you hear that noise coming out of some, your the room nearby, Fernando, that's your brother breaking a table that you ranked Patrick Mahomes number one. I'm I'm sure. Well, it's the preseason right now, so we'll see what happens uh, when we move forward. But Gilbert <laughs> Bills quarterback Josh Allen is both rumored to be on the cover of uh, the player for Madden 24 and dating actress uh, Haley Steinfeld, uh, who does the voiceover for Gwen Stacy and Spider Woman in the Spider Verse movies. Something or nothing? Uh, should, should Bills Mafia be concerned? Okay, there, there's nothing out of there. Believe into these things. And by the way, I don't even know who this Haley person is. It's gonna be another Haley going to be mentioned on the show. And by the way, the 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 movie that I just watched. There's the only person, one Haley here, and it's Haley Elwood. Oh, there you go. Yeah, uh, yeah. So that's a common name, but not the Haley. Haley. When you do the rankings for the Haley's, Elwood number one. There you go. There you uh, go. But but I don't know. I know it's kind of like the Kardashian curse, right? You date a Kardashian, your game kind of declines. Again, the Madden cover, your game declines. Uh, and I have Josh Allen number Got three. Are so, uh, you Googling the pictures of uh, what's her name again? Here you go. Okay. Uh, yeah, Rapid Fire is really taking a turn this week. Uh, long segment of quarterbacks, and now we're talking about pop culture with Haley Baldwin. I, I don't know her name. <laughs> Whatever her name is. <laughs> Baldwin. Stay away. Her dad doesn't yell at her. <laughs> uh, but yeah, nothing for me. I don't care. Do what you gotta do, Josh Allen. Just win games. Josh Allen, you're on the cover of Madden, bruh. I'd be nervous if I was you. I mean, I know the Madden. Is that Madden true though? Like, like for sure, you would be on the cover. Supposedly, and uh, everybody's freaking out because supposedly they were wanting to put Joe Burrow, Mahomes, and other people. I think Mahomes was the one that broke the the cur- No, he ended up not yeah. being terrible that well, year. They, no, they, lost, they got obliterated by Tampa that year. Oh, I've lost yeah, track so, of these things, by the way. Yeah, but you so have I. But I mean, the Madden curse is still the Madden curse. I wouldn't want to do it. So I'll say it's a little, a little something, something. Um, Gilbert, the NFL has yet to announce this year's hard knocks. Who are you going with? The team's eligible, the, the Bears, the Saints, the Jets, or the Commanders? Yeah, Fernando, I think I know your answer. And, and I was trying to be different here, and I couldn't find another reason to be different. It has to be the Jets here. Uh, Aaron Rodgers going. Uh, the, your boy, Zach Wilson, also maybe getting a little spotlight being on the bench there. You know, Robert Sala, I think, would be a good, interesting kind of character. Get to know him better. Sauce Gardner, by the way. So, uh, overall. Zach Wilson probably... after dark. Let's see what the Manhattan Milf Hunter likes to do. With <laughs> I know. Can we follow him? him? Have the cameras hey, follow? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all for it. You? I'm with the J-E-T-S. Jet, Jet, Jets also. I want to see what this is all about. Gilbert, on YouTube right now, they have, uh, they've they been doing a, a series. Kind of like what the Chargers do. But I think, well, Dan and Dago and I kind of thought it was a little, it's, it's really good. Well, not really good, but it's just good. It shows you how they got to Aaron Rodgers when they brought him in. Aaron talks on camera with them. Um, so it's actually a pretty good little mini series that they have right now. Um, Dan Dago and I found it interesting. That's what we're going to say. Um, but I'd love to see them on Hard Knocks. I think they'd be the the perfect team. And I think Woody Johnson would be excited for them to be on Hard Knocks for, I think, a third time. Remember, last time it's, let's oh, go yeah. get a goddamn snack. What was the second time? Rex Ryan. They had Rex Ryan had it twice. Oh, I forgot about yeah. that. Okay. I remember in one of those they're doing uh, bed checks, and he's like, "Revis, Revis, where are you, Revis?" Revis was holding out, and obviously uh, he wasn't there, so it was pretty funny. Uh, Gilbert, both the Steelers and the Patriots have long streaks of not finishing last in their divisions. For Pittsburgh, it's been thirty-four. It's been eighty-four years. Thirty-four years. Uh, while New England hasn't finished in de- uh, dead last in the AFC East since tw- uh, in 22 years, who finishes last out of one of these two teams? It's actually kind of tough because, yeah, great coaches, Bill Belichick, uh, Mike Tomlin. But yeah, this is why I'm, I'm saying it's tough because, you know, we ding me again, uh, SI, we're doing more rankings. Surprise, surprise. We're going to rank the top 32 teams, in, 32 teams in the NFL. Close to look. There you go. And I had a close look at the Patriots. 
And their defense is actually pretty good. I'm like, man, like you probably don't know the names too much. Like I'm not saying you, but in general, football fans like like Kyle Duggar, uh, have a good Josh, secondary. Josh Uchi, uh, yeah, Jonathan Jones is back, and who might they drafted the kid out of Oregon? Uh, yeah, Christian Gonzalez. Gonzalez. Uh, and then yeah, they have a, a bunch of guys in that defense. I'm like, man, it could be a pretty good defense. But then you start looking on the other side, Mac Jones, the other and side, the other side. Juju Smith Schuster, eh, maybe Bill O'Brien makes them a good offense. Okay, I'm, it's a long winded answer. It's gonna like if you got to pick one, it's the Patriots, but they might be a little sneaky. I know the AFC East is really tough, but I like their defense. Yeah, uh, it, it was. I mean, I, 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 I get where you're going with that, but that offense just I know Bill O'Brien's gonna be there, but I just don't know if I trust that offense. That Running much, back so. is good, or Amandre Stevenson, he had a nice, little you know, yeah, year. no, he had a no, they had he had a good season, but I mean, I, I just want to see if Mac Jones can improve or not. And the receiver that they have for him are still kind of whack, like they need to get better at receiver, in my opinion. But uh, maybe if they get DeAndre Hopkins, maybe they will be better. They're one of the teams that are rumored. Our All good right. friend uh, D- uh, Doug Keed is uh, is um, he he's been on it. He's saying that the Patriots might not have any uh, any real um, any real suitors when it or the Patriots may not have any competition when it comes to De- for DeAndre Hopkins. So we'll see what happens. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't mind that. You know, Bill Belichick kind of pull, pulling something out of nowhere. I, I could see that. That'd be interesting. Um, but. He hasn't won a Super Bowl ring since Tom Brady's left, so that's interesting. Uh, that's for Dan and Dago right there. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Gilbert, with the, <laughs> with the Dodgers and the Yankees playing this past weekend at Dodgers Stadium. By the way, Aaron Judge is an animal. He catches uh, the ball and he like hits, and the damn fence just opens right up. I'm like, God, dude, that dude's a beast. Uh, what is your favorite rivalry to watch in sports, Gilbert? Yeah, I, I I tried going to this series, but it was too expensive, and I never I didn't even watch it on TV. Uh, I watched two minutes of the NBA Finals this weekend, the last two minutes of Game Two. So that shows you I don't really care about base for NBA right now. Uh, but I do remember when I was growing up, you know, going to the ballpark, Dodger Stadium. Like there was nothing more electric than Barry Bonds and the Giants coming to town against the Dodgers, and then even to this day, it's still a big rivalry. So Giants Dodgers for me, I love it. Even when you take a Dodger jersey to San Francisco, they get on you. Uh, so it's a good rivalry for me. Yeah, they get on you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to go uh, Real Madrid and Barcelona. I, I think it's the greatest rivalry in all of sports. Uh, two teams that just hate each other. There's bitterness. Uh, just It's something else. When a Clásico happens, I think the world stops and watches the game just because it's, uh, it's the most – the, one of the most amazing series. Of all too, time, so. that for oh now. no, it stops in the United States. You want? I'm telling you, pull up the pull up the the what's it called the rank the ratings, and you'll see soccer people here love it. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna go Real Madrid Barcelona, but obviously a guy that uh, we rate very highly on this show is Dan and Dago. So let's go to him now and see what he's got cooking up for us. While I have you here, do not forget to check us out on all the social media platforms. We're on the Twitter, at Compass OTB. The OTB is capital. Well, we got the Instagrams, at Compass on the Beat. We are also on the Tic Tacs, Tic Tocs, whatever you call them, at Compass on the Beat, and at Compass FC 11. Do not forget to go out and check it out. And we got a bunch of programs. You already know that. We got a little House of Horns. We got a little What's Up Bolts. We got a little Combat Compass. We got regular Compass. And if you love everything about the job, we got Compass FC. We do it all here. Do not forget to check it out. Also, do not forget, smash the like button, comment, subscribe, be a compa, tell a compa. Let's get back to the program. Thank you for that, Dan and Dago. Obviously, uh, good stuff as always. Uh, Gilbert, in honor of uh, Flamin' Hot Cheetos' new movie being available for streaming this on June 9th on Hulu, we're doing a little history here when it comes to snacks and treats and everything that uh, we kind of like. Hot Cheetos, I mean, I just remember like whether it's, uh, I mean, I don't know if I'm a. I'm just gonna say it. Whether it's white girls, cholas, Mexican girl, anything, it's all been about hot Cheetos. People love it. People have loved hot Cheetos. I remember in school, you used to get that extra hot sauce to put it on the hot Cheetos and eat it with lemon and everything. Hot Cheetos. I just remember growing up, like hot Cheetos was always a thing. Everybody wanted hot Cheetos. Sometimes you go to the store and they were all gone because everybody loved them. But uh, I mean, am I is that? That's kind of fair to say, right? It's like 
everybody loves hot Cheetos. I think for the most part, <laughs> okay, do I'm going to give you another story, but I'll, cause you gave me a little setup here. I think they're a little overrated. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of hot Cheetos, but okay. If I go to the store, put it this way, I'm not picking it. But if, if there's Takis and there's hot Cheetos, what are you choosing? Oh, uh, I'm a, I think Takis are kind of overrated too. I like hot okay. Cheetos better. Uh, I don't mind Takis, but it's like, if you have it and you're opening the bag and you said you want some. I'll get a good amount. I'm like, okay, I can't, I can't put it, I can't, I can't put the bag down for it. So you don't want to pay for it. No, I just don't. It's not my first choice. And, no, I, and no, I think no. when if I go to the store, I'm not trying to get four bags. I'm trying to like think about, okay, my stomach's gonna hurt the next day. I don't want to, I don't want to pay for it. So if you have it around me, I'm gonna eat it. It's not like guac, guac or avocado. It's just like I will probably go more Doritos. I like the Cool Ranch Doritos. I'm, I'm, I have a bunch of flavors of Doritos. Doritos are, Doritos are my thing. Even the one that kind of has tapatio on it, the flavor is pretty good. Uh, the flaming hot ones are pretty good. Uh, the purple bag, I forgot the yeah, I love hot, I mean, Doritos. That but, purple bag is really good, right? Like, what's, the, what's, the, what's the name of that? Uh, flavor uh thing? blazing, yeah, something? blaze something, yeah, but that one's okay. Really I gotta good. be excited. I'm like, am I the only one? The no, bag, no, looks like your shirt, good. by the way, Fernando. The bag looks like that shirt. Hey, <laughs> it's a good color. This is a great shirt. Everybody loved it at Chargers. Everybody was, some, no, I love it. It's some, 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 some young lady was like, Oh, I like your shirt. I was like, Thank you. I was like, Every, I appreciate it. You still got to rock the the Stanley shirt that you wore for the oh, the Padres game that one time. I love that one. Oh, I have it right here. Yeah, I have it. Right that here. is I'm gonna the, rock it. Okay, you know what? The next time we put on the Compass merch side, we're gonna get a shirt like the types you like to wear, like the Hawaiian ones with the Compass logo, just for the. the you know what? I stuff. should I should do a, a I should wear it for mini camp. My uh, Stanley yeah. shirt for mini camp. No, I'm. No. No, oh, no, where? No. Why not? It's, it's a good shirt. You get oh yeah, it's, I like it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, to kind of get back on topic, I think they're a little overrated. I don't hate them. I like them, and they kind of go for a different topic. The ones that you know, Caroline, Caroline really likes is the flaming hot Cheetos, but baked. Uh, have you have you heard of the baked kind? The good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those, Those are, are hard to find. I had no idea. She will say, "Hey, when you go to the store, bring the baked kind." I'm like, I can't find them. She's like, "Yeah, they're, they're pretty hard to find." So now, and every time I go to a store. Like when I know they have chips, I gotta make sure to look for them because they're they're there. I gotta buy like five or six bags. Well, also like the fries. Oh, okay, that's another one. Hot Cheeto fries. Those I don't like those. Too. You don't like they those? They stick to the roof of my mouth. Oh yeah, I guess if we do Cheeto, right? Isn't that that's that kind of the point of the movie now? That's like, how big they've gotten. They have different types of hot Cheetos. Yeah, well, you the know puffs what's funny? I like the puffs too. <laughs> so that's like, yeah. I the puffs also get on the the roof of my tongue. So I, uh, yeah, that's true. But, but I like the Cheeto puffs better than the hot puffs. Okay. I remember, well, I mean, and this is off topic for Cheetos, but I remember in school, like my buddy and I used to sell Tostitos when we were at school because people used to love the, like, we used like to sell the Tostitos. Bag? Yeah, yeah. Like we bag in there. We bring a, we, no, we would bring a gym bag and we would just sell, like, in T, we would, his dad would go down in TJ and he'd bring the individual bags and we would just sell them all day uh, until, like, one time school, well, school caught him. They didn't catch me. Um, cause he was skinny and looked like a stupid shit. So like people didn't think he was an athlete when I had the duffel bag, people were like, Oh yeah, he's fine. So one day they catch him and, uh, he's like, Hey, I think I'm going to stop selling. I'm like, all right, I'm going to continue selling until they catch me. They never caught me. So I kept on selling. We would just put everything 50, 50, but, um, Wait, so you just buy them regular, like in the bag, you don't have them made with all the stuff they put into the bag. No, no, no. You I would just buy, I would just buy the big chamoy thing and the big hot sauce and then the big lemon. And I would just like oh, uh, okay, squirt okay. it so in you, bag. you do actually make yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, it wasn't just Tostitos. Yeah, no, no, no. Okay. So, but, and then people, sometimes people would pay me like, they'd be like, hey, can I give you a quarter? And you just like squirt some hot sauce in my uh, hot Cheetos. I'd be like, oh yeah, for sure. And I do that. But that's the thing is that people love those chips. The American chips are like, what, like, like the Lay's. What I do with Lay's is I throw them in a bowl. I put hot sauce, lemon, yeah, and, and chamoy, and then I mix them up and then I eat them like that. Like I can't eat them just like normal. By the way, another shout out for Alonzo. He tried bringing two bags of plain lays to uh, or Gobanzo retreat in Temecula, and I gave him a lot of crap for it. Don't bring not not one, but he brought two boring lays. Not that about deal. <laughs> that's hilarious. But I mean, it, it, and that's that's always been the the fun part is that like it just like I, I just remember like all the like the school started selling hot cheetos at one point in high school and i remember it was always sold out like you had to run over there to try and buy the hot cheetos because if not it'd be sold out and and people would like literally that's what they wanted nobody else wanted anything else but those hot cheetos i don't know it's crazy to me like i feel like like i didn't know how many people like that that was like you know okay maybe like only latinos like it because it's spicy because all we like is spicy food and with this movie kind of reminds me okay it's it's really big and then like 
like I, the story i'm not sure if the story is legit like i guess we're gonna find out in the movie but like like i guess a mexican guy who had a like a job at the building and the the cheetos company yeah invented it and i'm like i don't know what to believe but it's just fascinating how it was like a, like a legend well, now. but now they put hot cheetos and everything like there's hot cheeto burritos hot oh, cheeto yeah. like yeah. uh like yeah. california burrito but it ha- they have hot cheetos like sprinkled in it i've seen some people have you seen that tiktok thing where in maruchan they put maruchan and they put hot cheetos in it and they mix it together and then they they're eating the maruchan with the hot cheetos it, <laughs> it's so weird like People mix in hot Cheetos with everything. I've seen hot Cheetos uh, sushi, hot Cheetos burgers. I've seen a lot of different stuff with hot Cheetos. Like it, it's, yeah, it's, it's like the, the money grab. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of like with Oreos, man. They make different flavors of everything, like pumpkin Oreos. Bacon. Uh, no, the bacon, the bacon wrapped Oreos. See, people want to try them. So I guess they're trying that with Cheetos. Well, yeah. you know, it's funny. The, uh, the San Diego fair has a lot of that crazy ass food. And actually, I think we're going in a couple of weeks. I've never, I haven't been to the fair since I was a kid. Or is it just San Diego Fair? Or what is it? Yeah, it's a San Diego, uh, San Diego yeah. Fair. But never there's been. a lot of people. I, I hate people, and there's a lot of yeah, people yeah, there. Like, there. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, so and I, but my mom wants to go. They're doing some like Neil Diamond thing. My mom really wants to go. So we're like, oh, okay, we'll go with you. Um, but I just want to try some of the food that they have there because some of the food's really good. But like the the deep fried Oreos with like bacon is like something that I'm like, oh, okay, that that sounds. That sounds really good. I actually saw a recipe on how to smoke it on my smoker. So, but I was like, eh, I don't want to try it. I'll just get it there at the at the fair. But um, but good stuff on hot Cheetos, obviously. Uh, yeah, I didn't know we we're gonna have a good conversation like that. Hey, I mean, hot Cheetos. Is, uh, yeah, no, hot Cheetos is uh is is some is some good stuff, Gilbert. I'll I'll have to say. I but do want to watch the movie though. I'll say that. <laughs> let's bring in the fellas and uh and see what they what they think. <laughs> Vic, good hey, weekend. On a, How yeah, doing? good weekend. I also we didn't plan this. Uh, I had not talked to Gilbert, but I also got my. Uh, I went to go get fitted for my suit. I actually went yesterday, so I. If you guys want me, uh, want to know about a story, I'll uh, wait around for a burial of the week, and it'll be a nice one. It I won't bury anybody, but I'll I'll kind of get into it because yeah, right, you I, bury people all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of uh, people who bury people. <laughs> no laptop issues this week. Hey. I'm all smiles. I'm all smiles. <laughs> Congrats. By the way, Dan and Diego told me, hey, those new goggles that just came out by Apple, I'm going to buy them for you. I was like, Dan, yeah. you don't have Probably. to do that. That way it takes my eye retina DNA or whatever and makes clones and then <laughs> lo and behold, we're all dead. Yippee dee oh, yeah. What is I I robot the movie or what? Exactly. Did you ever see it? Yeah, it's pretty good actually. Before, well, the one that the one that would be more like that is the one with Arnold Schwarzenegger, the one that uh oh, I Puerto robot. Rico? No, I know no. which one. Tremors. Which one? No. Puerto Rico? Which, recall. Puerto recall, yeah. 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 My minority report, one of those. Dan, did you have a nice weekend? I had a nice weekend, yeah. Um, yeah, it was just chill. We were just here. We watched. What did we? Well, I guess we'll get into it. Whatever. It was a nice weekend. I'm ready to get going. Let's go. All right. Uh, been what, was your, what was your biggest takeaway from the weekend in sports? Starting with me. Uh, yeah. With with me, uh, I'll have to say this. I I know we kind of I kind of wanted to talk a little baseball, but not get too deep into it. Just with the new uh, balance schedule this year. Where, you know, as you guys talked about on that last segment on rapid fire with the Yankees and Dodgers, you know, we usually have to wait three or four years to see those series. Now we don't. We're going to get them every year from now on. Um, And you saw like uh, Dodger Stadium was sold out the whole weekend. I'm sure down in San Diego, whenever the Yankees or the Red Sox or any of those teams come through, it's going to be a big sellout as well. So I'm just loving this new uh, balance schedule. I don't know what took them so long to do this. Um, it's It's been great, like, getting to see teams like the the Rays. I, I want to see it every year, and, and it gets kind of redundant having to see, you know, your own division 20 times a year. Now you cut, that, cut down on that, and now you get to see some of these teams that you want to see. Like, you never know from year to year what teams are going to be really good. 
And now we're getting to see that, like, you know, as we talked about with some of the other teams. So kind of like the Rangers, I kind of want to see the Rangers. I want to see some of the other teams uh, come to Dodger Stadium or for the Dodgers or the Padres to be able to go to those stadiums. So for me, it's it's it, this been has been a, a really uh, cool thing that uh, Major League has done aside from the pitch clock. So for me, that was my biggest takeaway. They play every team once now every year? Yeah, now they're going to get to play every team. They do like, less division games. Yeah, exactly. I, I've actually been screaming for that for a long time before I stopped caring about baseball. So there you go. And now they bit. listen to you when you stop watching. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Hey, oh, come back. Come watch it. Yeah. I'm an OG. I never cared about baseball. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why the Padres are playing so bad. Yeah, so, I, like, somebody put uh, – somebody in our group chat put, fill in the blank, the Padres, like – is the reason why the Padres are doing so bad. It was you, Scott. it was me. It was But I put, but I, no, it was me. I said, that, like, somebody had tweeted that out. Yeah, and exactly. And then I put Dan and Diego not believe, or Dan not believing is the reason why the Padres are doing so bad. It's an idiotic sport. There's no contact. They wear oven mitts to run bases. It was ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get buried for that uh all right okay. dan what was your biggest takeaway from the sports weekend oh i was gonna say by the way our weekend was pretty exciting now that i remembered i did have something <laughs> we went all the way up to uh, marietta to try oh, yeah. some pudding and uh pudding? it was pretty interesting what just pudding melissa had seen some well, pudding like, thing on instagram and she wanted out. to drive up there you already know and then it's those gourmet it up. so they can over he's taking it up but uh, you know, it's one of those Instagram places that overcharge you for pudding. It, you know, it was pretty good, expensive, yeah. but I mean, it was pretty good. What then, can like, you do with pudding that's so special? What, what can you do differently? Well, no, but it's like, imagine how can I put it like a cold stone, but there's pudding. So, like, I got birthday cake, there was a piece of actual birthday cake in there, whipped cream, and sprinkles. And they put Oreo in it, they do different, yeah, things yeah, yeah. So, you know how it is, it is what it is. She had a nice time, she got a, we had a good time, we had a little road trip. And we found a, a Louisiana, like, yeah. a Cajun restaurant right next to it, right next door. Oh, oh, yeah. I had a what did I have? I had jambalaya, so jambalaya. Which was really wasn't good. smart. Considering yeah, because I was back on I was the in the car. Yeah. I was in the car ride back, and I put like thirteen napkins all over me, and I'm like eating it. Yeah, yeah. Mom's like, mom was on driving. She's like, are you good? I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, I had a fried chicken, so oh boy. The fried yeah, chicken, really? Yeah. You found yeah. that in California, like Southern in Marietta, hidden in Marietta. Marietta, yeah, a hidden oh, gem. Nice. It was packed. Oh, all right. Yeah. Well, that, that reminds me, uh, Victor. I've been wanting to tell you this. We could probably text about this. Uh, but the partner, the, the law firm, Caroline, does not like seafood. And I'm, now that I live in North Wax. Coast, I've been trying to go to Kick and Cajun. Uh, so we, we need to go one day. Yeah, we do. Uh, yeah, whatever. Let me know. I got, like I got pieces over here. Huh? Nothing? No, I think she, the eyes freak around shrimp. So. Shrimp eyes? doesn't have eyes. Yeah. Shrimp doesn't have eyes. <laughs> you know what's <laughs> funny? In my family, everybody for the pozole, everybody fights for the eye. Yeah. Really? What do you mean? <laughs> the my yeah. uncle, the they, want, they want the pig eye. Oh, really? Yeah. Is that the, all yeah. that in there? Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That's yeah. A yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. You know, we're going to decorate your wall. Just put Dan and Dago <laughs> live here. Like, <laughs> yeah. I point to your brain. Dan and Dago lives here. <laughs> Does it feel too empty for you <laughs> or what? <laughs> no, I just love it. I love it because we went from like middle ages to where you went to that festival. Now we're just back. I <laughs> I keep like like it's the off season, so I want to have like I could do it on the weekend, but I keep getting lazy and not doing it. So I'll do it. Just put there Dan and Diego. Thanks for outing me. Free, dude. Yeah, that, 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 I'll be you next week. I'll be just Dan. Dan, you yeah. gave him a great picture. He could put he could put it up there, didn't you, for his birthday? Yeah, I could. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I did. And what did, what did he did. tell you? Oh, my birthday was last month. Loser. <laughs> <laughs> you're not gonna forget that. Up. But well, I'm my sorry, you're a little late. Dan, what was your what was yeah, your yeah, biggest sports takeaway? Here we go. Kareem Benzema, El Capitan, shout out, leaving uh, Real Madrid. I, I will tell you this, Alberto. If you get a chance, I know you're not a soccer guy, so I'm gonna try and try and convert it to you, like we are for F1 when we watch Drive to Survive. Watch the Apple TV documentary they did on Real Madrid last season, and it'll it is the the. The best thing you will ever watch. It was the best, you know, sports season, sports, whatever. I would put up there against anybody. I don't care if he falls asleep. He <laughs> talks about all this random crap that puts me to sleep. I'm all, <laughs> all right. What what they did last season with Kareem Benzema leading it, absolutely magisterial. It is the greatest thing I've ever seen. No Super Bowl can compare to it. Not even twenty eight to three. 
absolutely insane. I'll just leave it at that. Shout right. out to Kareem Benzema, have, but I'm a very you. I've never heard where, of that. Where guy. is he going? I was gonna say, yeah, I never heard of it. You, you guys texted about it. So I've never 300 heard about mil- three hundred million dollars for two years. Yeah, How the much? Saudis are out there. The Saudis supposedly right now have three billion dollars to throw at players. Can and I? They're trying to bring all these players over. Are, are they oh, gonna? Wow. I, and I know this is kind of off topic, and I know, I know, uh, Gilbert's gonna hate me asking this, but is 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 uh, are the Saudis gonna do like what they did with the live? Uh, soccer yeah. with uh, golf. That's what they, is that what they're trying to yep. do with soccer? They're trying, they're trying to haul all, like right now. They're just going off off of the like they they try to get Messi. They're trying to get Benzema. They're trying to get all these older players. Quality. But supposedly next year they want to go after young players. But if I'm these young players, I wouldn't take that damn money because right now, okay, yeah, but you're not gonna have the same skill that you're gonna have over here playing yeah. over here. So the, the Saudis are trying to mess everything like. They're trying to screw everything up when it comes to soccer. And it's like, get the bag and play. Like, no, 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 no. Hell no. This Develop, become a champion, and then go play there to retire. Out of here. Like, like, it's, it's like the MLS. It's yeah. like 80,000 tournaments. Just go win other different tournaments. Who cares? In Saudi idiot. Arabia, for what? Nobody's going to believe that you're the best if you're out there. I Ignore. will when I'm crying with my money for $600 million. Mute his mic. Mute his mic. Scumbag. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just put just put a huge mural of Dan and Dago right behind. The Real Madrid fans are just feel so shaken that their best players are leaving. Us. No, I'm I'm okay because you know what I know what's Real coming. Madrid, Real Madrid doesn't stand for mediocrity, unlike other teams. You so. guys had a monopoly in the whole league, just paying everybody. Oh no, <laughs> Jude Bellingham is coming. I have her. It's fine. Yeah, I'm pretending to carry a conversation here. I'm actually impressed with myself. Continue. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go uh, burial of the week. I'm gonna start it off this week. Uh, I was gonna bury Tua Tonga Vailoa, ESPN, and yeah, all please, these Dolphins please, fans a lot. because they keep on talking about jujitsu and how he's learning how to fall. <laughs> I saw that. Are you kidding? So you're gonna tell me that week <laughs> one Joey Bosa is just gonna grab him, put cradle him, and put him down? Hell no, Joey he Bosa is gonna WWE. Him and take him down. Yeah, <laughs> you think it's, it's a John so Cena bad. match? <laughs> it's so when I heard that jujitsu thing, I couldn't go, but. I'm going to go with Matt Healy. I think that's his name and Taylor Swift. I saw this on my way down oh, Haley. from uh, <laughs> from Chargers. Uh, they broke up. I feel bad for Matty because he's about to get a crap ton of songs written about him. Uh, we know how Taylor Swift is. Who we cares? know that uh, she's very vindictive and uh, <laughs> write songs about him and about everybody else. I think that's uh, but I mean, that's how they make their music, so uh, yeah, you know, yeah, she probably yeah. does. She probably pays these guys. She's like, I need you to just treat me like garbage, and he gets his cut of the of the royalties <laughs> later. Dude. Well, she's been doing didn't, some weird stuff, brother. On didn't, didn't somebody on the, on the Pat McAfee show say that Damn they could see uh, Swift dating uh, Aaron Rodgers? <sighs> Could oh, yeah, well, he have a concert? That'd be, that'd be the ultimate toxico. Couldn't yeah. he have fathered her, isn't he, like, twice a day? <laughs> hey. There's not that big of an age gap. They're, oh, they're that's not – yeah, yeah no. Al but Pacino, he, Jesus Christ. Be like, <laughs> he, oh, yeah, you saw that? He's 85 having a baby. Yeah. Okay, but you know what the funniest part is? Is that a couple of days before that, everybody was talking about how uh, – what's his name? Robert De Niro was going to have another kid with his uh, – yeah. With his wife, and all of a sudden, it's like, oh, hey, guess what? Now it's Al Pacino, and you're like, dude, what is going on? Like, what are you guys like? What are you guys doing? That child's We're first memory it. of his father is going to be at his <laughs> funeral. It's a shame, dude. <laughs> dude Al Pacino. Just... Al Pacino, by the way, came out and said, oh, I can't wait to raise this kid oh, and watch him, watch him grow. I'm like, dude, you both are going to need diapers <laughs> at the same time. Like, what are you talking about? Who knows? Like, you must know something we don't, dude. dude I was, in the, I was in the training at the gym, and there was a story saying, are, are old dads in now? Is this a training now? <laughs> oh, no, no, they're not. No, they're not. Don't do it. No. No. But can, like, I don't know. I'm just uh, – but you guys were asking for it. I got it for you guys because that's what I do here. I, I try and hook you guys up with good content. Here we go. Here's uh, Aaron Rodgers rocking out to Taylor Swift. That's right, Miles Taylor, huh? Oh, and Bradley Cooper. Oh, there's Miles Turner. Oh, there's Bradley Cooper. There's Miles Turner's weirdo ass. Miles Taylor. <laughs> Miles Turner. Look at look at look at, look at Aaron Rodgers. He's really rocking out to this. 
You get that there. Yeah, there goes that, the jet oh. I could totally see them dating. Yeah, there goes the jet season, dude. That'd be oh, the yeah. amazing. That'd be the just the <laughs> most sexual yeah. relationship ever. That'd be amazing. But uh, Vic, go Why ahead. Why do you need another girl okay. to probably separate him and his family, dude? He doesn't need any. <laughs> All right, so I I kind of want to give a shout out. I when I went to go uh, try on uh, uh, my fitting for a suit, we were looking at my partner Megan. We went to J C Penny here at the Northridge Mall, and we were looking for a suit for for the wedding. And we were trying out different for suits. your wedding or the wedding that uh, oh for the for our friend's wedding, oh, okay. our uh, Julio's uh, our friend Julio's wedding. Um, and so uh, one of the things I noticed is that there was a bunch of kids there. And they were all there with their moms and their tias and their sisters. And they were all helping them uh, find a suit for their graduation because it's graduation season. And yeah. I just thought it was really cool. That, like, I'm not trying to knock on on Latino fathers here. That's not that's not why, what I'm, I'm going to do here. I'm going to actually just shout out the moms and the tias because they were there trying to help out. Like one, there was this one kid. He's He's probably like 17 or 18. He was frustrated with one of his sisters like. Because, you know, like, they're like, hey, try on these shoes. And, like, I think one of the things that we kind of get into as, as young Latinos is that, you know, we, we haven't been, uh, like, told about the suit and how important it is. I thought, I remember when I was uh, at CSUN, one of, one of my classmates there, he said, you really don't become an adult until you get a, a, suit, a suit tailor for yourself. And that always stuck with me, and uh, and then just seeing that on yesterday with with some of the kids, I thought that was really cool. That it's actually the women in their lives, the ones that are, you know, trying to get them a suit. So, the big, to, Victor, know. this is the wrong segment. We're supposed to bury people. So I know, get, I get know. To, get to I bury the dads. The bury I know, dads. Right? I know. <laughs> I was like, and then Father's Day is coming up. I was like, I don't want to do that. I just want to <laughs> give a shout out to the moms and the tias and the sisters. For that. Uh, I could bear them for you if you want. I, yeah. I freaking, I would have been so annoyed going to try on my suit and a bunch of kids running around like, oh hell no! <laughs> and, Get away from me, you rat bastards! That's what you F, F them it kids. reminds. By the way, I'm, I'm too. I'm gonna jump the gun real quick, but I'm not trying to spoil my uh, the good and the bad. Well, go ahead you. and do yours. Oh, uh, whoa, whoa. Well, well, real quick, it's like all these damn kids were coming out from watching Spider Man, whatever universe they're coming out of from. Just, <laughs> Creating chaos, leaving popcorn over the place. I'm never going back to the Northridge AMC. That place was a disaster, running with kids. Yeah, bury those kids. Yeah. Pull uh, out your glasses, pull out your cane, put on the white. Yeah, that was go ahead, damn. Was, damn. My barrier of the week is this real quick. I'm not going to spend too much time. I just find it so idiotic the way players flip-flop with the status of the team. Like, most recently, we saw Kareem Benzema say that he wasn't leaving Real Madrid. Or did he say he wasn't going to leave, or he was hesitant? He said he wasn't going to leave. Then he yeah. Then he flips he again, he and he's now he's going to Saudi Arabia. Just like we saw a few like last year, or I don't know how long ago with Russell Wilson, how he's like, "Hey, hey, Team Three, why don't we just leak that maybe I want to leave?" Then it gets leaked. No, no, what? <laughs> I would never want to leave. It's just it's just so idiotic to me. Like, you're in control of your own destiny. Who cares about these narratives? Uh, if you're going to leave, just leave. I mean, it is what it is. Like, at the end of the day, they're going to have to find a replacement for you anyway. So that's just what I think is so silly, the way these people are so – it's almost like uh, like the boys. I think that's what the boys does so well that, you know, I believe that half of these people are run by PR firms. And they think, oh, oh, if I do this, what's the polling on this and that? And, you know, I feel like that's how these players are. They're probably like, should I leave? Would I be viewed as a bad guy, though, if I leave? And it's like, dude, who cares? Like, it is what it is. At the end of the day, you got to do what you got to do. Leave her alone. She's with her abuela. Uh, go ahead. Uh, You're an no idiot. Uh, shout out Kareem Benzema, who I just learned about. <laughs> Forget in the bag. Because <laughs> uh, Dan Davis, sure, I want to see their play, his players succeed, apparently. Okay. What are you talking about? I just won Champions League last year, guy. Yeah, you made mean, so much money already. That means nothing to me. I don't know. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> real quick, I'm, it's time to fight back. The guy who's always ranking lists, I get bombarded with comments and people saying my ranking sucks. Uh, last week it was Tony Pollard being number four. People lost their mind on the running back rankings. I like Tony Pollard. Get over it. I made my rankings. I'm not going to defend that right now. But I had enough is enough when I made my top 10 defensive linemen combined with edge rushers and interior defensive linemen. 
imagine trying to put 10 players from two positions and make them into one freaking list. It was a lot what? of good players, and people were what? still pissed off that I didn't have Max Crosby in the top what? five. Or he got paid Watt. because of Storm yeah. Norton, did. What? <laughs> He got paid because of Storm Norton. Oh, there you go. That yeah, he did. That was like a crazy. <laughs> and he only got the right tackle, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then Miles Garrett and TJ Watt. People were mad at being TJ like, Watt. Wow. They're both oh, good. TJ, what do you want me to do? TJ out half the season. Watt every year. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're one of the people. Uh, well, he was six on the ranking, and what he are you was talking hurt. about? I just defended you. Okay, yeah, He's thank out you. Out half the year. There you go. How yeah, there you go. That's why he was head. six. So thank you. Uh, let me give you the top five on top of my head. Chris Jones, number five. What? Number four, Miles Garrett, number what? eight. Um, Michael Parsons. Is that Miles Garrett with a helmet what? in his hand or a Miles Garrett without the helmet well, in his hand? Whichever one you want. Whichever one is more, uh, more of an enforcer. Is that uh, five finger Jason Pierre Paul or a three finger? <laughs> <No. Jason? laughs> uh, number two, Aaron <laughs> Donald, because he was hurt. And then number one, Nick Bosa. Come on. Uh, th- it's a lot of good players in the NFL, and I can't. You're going to be mad. Keep. Keep being mad, but enough is enough. Leave me alone. You didn't pick yeah, my team, listened. Gilbert. My my favorite yeah. player on the you, team. Oh, what a travesty! You go, so Reddick didn't make the top ten. I'm like, get out of here! Like, I, I still had to rank freaking Quinton Williams and Jeffrey Simmons and Dexter Lawrence. The Eagles like, have here. 70 sacks. They should have three guys in the yeah, top they had, ten. They had zero, by the way. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, all right, it's time now for avocado roast. The good, the bad, and the rotten. Uh, Dan, why don't you start us off? All right, I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. I was not. Okay, thank like, you, Dan. Uh, let's move on. <laughs> he like, always starts that ready. way too. By the way, it's like a I long run. Ready to flip the bird too, but <laughs> dude, you must be a masochist though. Like you, <laughs> I saw, I read the comments to one of them, and they're like, "This guy is totally just doing this for shock value and to get comments." <laughs> get but the like clicks. idiots, they keep falling into it. Like, All right. Like, <laughs> I saw you pump out like five more lists, and I'm like, Yeah, oh, and then, then my boss are like, Hey, great job this week. I'm like, Yeah, <laughs> but anyway, uh, I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. Better call you Saul. I uh finished it. I was not a huge fan, I didn't mm. think you know, Ooh. I love Saul Goodman, the character, I loved him in Breaking Bad, but I was not a huge fan of Better Call Saul. Like, I thought some of it, like, I don't want to spoil anything, but I thought some of the storyline, I was kind of like. This, this is just, in my mind, just reinforcing more and more why I'm not a huge fan of spinoffs or uh, or remakes. But, you know, obviously Bob Odenkirk, shout out. You know, his performance was well and everything else. It was he's good to see some of the bear. I'm excited for that. He's going to what? He's going to be in The Bear. Season oh, is two. that a new movie coming out? That's uh, be- <laughs> it's, a, it's a series. TV oh, show. okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so he had a good performance, everything else. But like I said, I would probably give it a 75. Like, it wasn't totally terrible. It was cool to see some of the other characters. But other than that, I was not I was not too impressed with it. I gave up on it a long time ago. Yeah, see? So you gave it a zero. Uh, Vic? Uh, you know what? You go. I'll kind of go off of yours. Um, I will, okay. I'll talk about Prestige TV. But go go ahead. I, I know what you're going to talk about. Uh, so I finished. We finished Ted Lasso. Um, not a fan I, of that I, either, huh? Not a fan of season three, honestly. Mm. Uh, I thought the final episode was really good. Some people had said it was better than The Office. I still think that The Office no. ending was yeah. was better. But Ted just did everything so right. I mean, it literally felt like, and I've seen this uh, some of these these rumors on Twitter that uh, it, he was like Mary Poppins and he came in and was with the team until he helped him win and get uh, – and he was going to leave him at the right time. I thought that was pretty go- cool. I thought it was a good uh, – I thought they had really good closure. The the scenes with him and uh, – and I can't remember – Rebecca, they were yeah. just awesome in that final episode. Everything that they – them together. Great my, well, Yeah, just great stuff. And one of those – one of those scenes, I think she spoke 197 words and he spoke three. Like that, it was just incredible the way that they ended the the Ted Lasso. I thought it was great. If you guys haven't watched it, um, now obviously you're hearing about spinoffs and about the person that became the new manager of uh, AFC Richmond. That uh, they might do a spinoff with all those guys and do something like that. Um, the airport, the airplane scene, I thought was incredible. Uh, I just thought it was a great overall, uh, and uh, I put it in my top five endings of all time. For, for shows God, i thought yeah. it was that good um but man I, i'm really gonna miss i was watching we're the millers 
And I felt like it was a bootleg Ted Lasso yeah, that I was yeah. watching because he has the haircut, but he doesn't have the yeah. mustache. Yeah. So, uh, but I honestly, I, I, I'd have to give Ted Lasso probably a 97 uh, rating. I just thought it, I, I, I've just, I've really liked it. I thought he's done a good, and there he goes. And I thought he's done a really good job with it. I think, I don't think it got over the top. I don't think it got drawn out. I think uh, everything was um, it, like, if this is the end of Ted Lasso, then that's great. They're going to continue it with somebody else. That's great too. But uh, definitely, um, I thought it was a, a good show and I, I really enjoyed it. And it's something that you can enjoy with your mom, with your brother, yeah. with your sister. Like you can enjoy it with anybody. So I thought it was a, I thought it was a great show. Yeah, no, and I I agree. Uh, my partner Megan, she's she's not a sports fan at all. We had uh, our um, her mom uh, visiting us for two weeks. She got into the show as well. Like it's more like it not only got people who don't know about soccer or football like interested in in the show, but like now you want to know about these clubs. Like I learned, I've you know I know people who have learned about have become fans of, of soccer. Like some people didn't know that it's not a real team. Like that's how far it's a real it is. city though. It's, it's a, real a real city. city. You can go yeah. and visit and they have stuff there for you to go and check out. But as you talked about, it was, I like, I low key like cried like three times during that episode, but it was really good. I don't want to spoil it. For my, uh, my mom actually like the first episode, she was kind of like, whatever's about it. And she was kind of playing with the dogs and doing some other stuff. Then by the second episode of the first season, Okay, she got hooked and like she just watched it all right. And she ended up catching up to uh to the regular Ted Lasso. So the last three episodes we were able to watch them all together and uh watch obviously the finale. But um but Vic, go ahead with yours. Yeah, no, and 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 it goes to what I wanted to talk about in terms of the like what that show has done for for just for prestige tv like if you don't know what prestige tv is like like pretty much since the once the sopranos came and they made cable tv your number one thing like anything that was on well now it's streaming uh uh since that era that's that's pretty much prestige tv you got you know uh uh, uh breaking bad you know you have the sopranos you have the wire you have uh, Game of Thrones. And I remember just thinking, like, what are we going to do after Game of Thrones, especially after that disappointing uh, finale that we got in Game of Thrones, especially that last season? And HBO has done a really good job, even though they're going to max now, of of just being mm-hmm. able to produce a show in the – we got the succession finale. That, that's been one of the like, – and now you're starting to hear the whole – well, what are the top five uh, prestige TV uh, uh, shows since since uh, prestige TV came about because of how good Succession was? And now you have, you know, shows like Ted Lasso. And I don't know if you guys have checked out Abbott Elementary. That's another really good show uh, where it talks about teachers. It's kind of like The Office and Parks and Rec, mm-hmm. but about teachers and the public public uh, school system. That's also another good show. Um and I, I, I think like people, uh, you know, will say, well, that's it. Like, we're not going to get good shows like this. And I think we are. You just have to wait around. You got to give uh, uh, shows a chance. And, you know, I know we're in the bench era uh, right now, but I think we're kind of going away from it. We're starting to go back to the week to week shows. And it, that. it, that's been that's been good. Like, it, it depends on what you like. I I'm, I still haven't figured out whether the Bears going to be they're putting out all the all the episodes for season two or they're going to do week by week. I know Amazon does the three episodes and then they they release them week by week. So at least everybody's trying their own thing. And now Netflix as well. Mm-hmm. I think I don't know. I know for uh, Stranger Things, they're going to do that same thing where they release a couple of episodes in one month and then the next month you'll have the rest of the episode. So I um, uh, I'm just glad that we're there with prestige TV and it's, it's good to see. And hopefully the, the writer strike comes to an end soon and they pay the writers because we need more shows like that. Uh, Dan, don't think I'm winking at you. My eye is bothering me. So yeah, you've been uh, having some problem over there. Looking yeah, at I the know. Mirror. I uh, was like, here. I saw you looking in the mirror, like mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all. <laughs> I thought you were going to go a different route with that. I, know, right? I was already called something similar by some scumbag on here earlier. 
You're the big sign that says media's over here. <laughs> what a scumbag. What? Just what to remember. A scumbag. Herbert was trying to debate to talk to us, and I'm like, well, until you leave, because we got that giant shirt, he knows the media's here. <laughs> no, Justin Herbert. Don't worry, he was the ugliest one there, so that let him know they were there. Anyways, uh, I'm like, there's somebody no, else. I don't know. But, but go ahead, Gilbert. Uh, but yeah, I like your shirt. I'm no, don't get it twisted. I like the shirt. No, no, no. Don't uh, let him recover. Cover. Don't let him recover, Frank. And then also here, this is what I give you the the the, the bang. Uh I I, re, I watching the first episode of Tell so I was reminded of why I, I've taken so long to watch it. It just I like the show. It just I I hate the so much the over the top cheesiness, and I get that's yeah. the character and you just too feel yeah. good. I'm like Give it all right. Give it to me in spurts. And that first episode was hard to get through because it was all about how like, yeah, you're the you're the, you're the ex coach that left, and I'm gonna just take the, the the high road here. I'm like, dude, get over it. But I'm sure it will develop, and I gotta get patient with it. But yep. this is why the mix of I am with Ted Lasso. But anyways, I don't I don't feel the same way you guys do about how great it is. But I like it. I know. Uh, now here, this is where I get my credibility of uh, judging uh, <laughs> movies and shows. <laughs> <laughs> uh don't laugh uh you would i know you'll be shocked here that uh, i ended up watching the little mermaid <laughs> uh which i had no idea that it was a live action little mermaid and it was it came out you so thought late. you were seeing the cartoon no i had no idea that it was it was even oh. out and i i told i told caroline you know what we need to get out the house it's been a minute we got to do something and i'm like oh she's okay what do you watch what, what do you want to watch i'm like well you know maybe fast x Maybe even the Mario's movie. I don't. I don't care. I, I like Mario Kart or the even Mario the movie's still even out? Guardians. Whatever. I don't care. I'll watch it. And then what's those? And you ended up at the little. Oh, oh, or even Spider Man. Like, all right, fine, Spider Man. Whatever. And she's like, with the delinquents, you just. I know. I know. I was just trying to like, you know, that was that was my top four, but just getting out. I was not gonna put Little Mermaid as, in my list. And she's like, you left out a very important one because she likes watching all these Disney movies. So. We went to go watch Little Mermaid. She won the battle because I've been hogging the, the TV schedule lately. So, yeah. Uh, but luckily, she felt the same way like I did. It wasn't that great. It was uh, For me, I, I hated it. Uh, oh, my God. Like, every single five minutes, they had one scene of talking, and then they started singing. I'm like, how many sing-alongs are we going to have here? And I remember it's a Disney movie. And yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't remember watching the original, to be honest. I'm like, who's that talking crap? He's Jamaican? I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you're Jamaican. <laughs> you, dude, so, I've seen on TikTok so many fights and like, I'm like, it was like like one black lady turns around and goes, I've been waiting for a movie like this for years, and you're over here ruining it. And she starts fist fighting this other really? lady. Like <laughs> it was some black lady, some Mexican lady, like hitting each other. And I'm like, oh my god, like throwing popcorn. I'm like, yo, like it's not that serious. The, the one Bro, no, no, no. was pretty good. Like, I get it, you know, it's good for diversity and, and then all that, but like they were reaching at one point because they had the United Nations of the the little sisters of the mermaid. They had they had to get one from each one. There was a Latina girl. There was an Asian girl. It was okay, a small right. world after all. I guess. <laughs> yeah. I'm like I get it. We're trying hard here, but I did like the lead character. She was great. The people around her were pretty terrible. Uh, the actress, the comedian, what's her name? Uh, she's a white woman. Oh, Melissa. <laughs> Melissa McCarthy. Yeah, she was a good Ursula. Other than that, it was it stunk, and I fell asleep the last ten minutes. So I had to tell Caroline what happened. So you could uh, tell he uh, is the the, the guy already. tried in was a Latino. So shout out to us right there. So uh, how does that work? Is yeah. that her? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they they tried really hard to include everybody, and they checked off the list. And uh, there you go. Yay for DC! Yay! <laughs> And they're gonna make a boat lot of money. Yeah, and the uh, rating is uh forty percent on the. It's a terrible avocado rating. Yeah, I'll, I'll wait till it comes out on Amazon. You're actually uh, okay. Right. Right. I want to watch it. Yeah, right. I mean, well, I'm just saying. Uh, all right, real quick, it's time for una mas. Uh, speaking of soccer, uh, Gilbert, uh, I don't know if you know this, but uh, Luton Town's soccer team just made it. More Luton Town has they just made it from more soccer jesus the hell they just made it to the premier league gilbert look at the way the stadium is built <laughs> look at all the homes around it so oh, to wow. get to the stadium That's close you have to go through homes you're gonna see it right now it's awesome like look at that that's the entrance to the stadium gilbert and there's homes right next to it uh there's there's the end there's the there are the seats and the homes are right next to it so obviously Luton Town is uh it's a wild sports story and Vic thank you for putting this they were purchased for seven dollars 
Back in 2003, Gilbert. Seven dollars? They filed for bankruptcy twice. They fell to the fifth division in English soccer. They made it all the way up. Now they're in the Premier League and they'll earn $200 million in additional income. So it's an incredible, like, look, Gilbert, right there, you're in the soccer stadium and the homes are right there. Like, <laughs> it's like it's Wrigley so Field. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. It's, it's, there, it's yeah. crazy to see this, uh, but it's so a cool Bruce story. Like, I thought it was a good. Just bulldoze those houses and make it bigger. This is ridiculous. They <laughs> probably <laughs> do. They're... Go, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say they probably will because uh, it... – I think they're gonna get about ten million dollars. Yeah, 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 to to re 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 renovate the whole renovate, area. Yeah, there. renovate. Yeah. And then, but like you're gonna get Man City coming there, Manchester United. Like it's gonna be crazy when those big teams come down there to play. Yeah. But I thought it'd be uh, really cool to share uh, this thing. Congratulations. Where, where is it again? It's in London. Uh, mm -hmm. it's in. Is it in London? No, it's, it's in, in England. England. That's all you need to know, guy. United um, Kingdom. Same thing? <laughs> no, it's in Luton Town. Um, Great Britain? Great Britain? Shots. You're the worst. Uh, I never know the difference. Like, people get mad. It's like, Great Britain. No, United I think Kingdom. United Kingdom is England, Wales, Scotland, and uh, Northern Ireland. Yeah, and even those even those countries have their own leagues. Like, the, yeah. what's it? Wrexham? The one that... Uh, yeah, they're um, in Wales. Yeah, they're in Wales. And they hit, like, uh, what's his, what are their names? The guy from... I wonder uh, if they can 20, get to the fun. Yeah, all those guys had they have they bought that team. I don't know them too. Like they they made over over uh, I think a million dollars just from that from that deal or something like that. And then like uh as what is it, Extrum, they they took um they took the team to Vegas on a vendor and they spent like uh half a half a million dollars just to celebrate. There you uh, go, Gilbert. We... Heathrow okay. Airport is down here. Oh, so it's London amazing. is over here, and Luton Town Football Club it's all an hour the way away. here. It's about an hour away. Oh, well, let's yep. make it down there one day. I, I, I wouldn't mind seeing that. Hey, that'd be sick. And then, like, you have Watford right there. <laughs> you have uh, obviously a lot of different teams that, like, there's a lot of teams in London. Uh, Manchester's in there. There's a lot of different teams. No, Manchester, right not London guy. Well, not in London, but I'm saying in the proximity that right here it's circled. <laughs> that's oh. where it is. <laughs> I'm, I didn't mean it was in London, obviously. Obviously, it's not in there. I had to take a train ride to go up to the stadium when I went. Yeah, I, I, I crap on soccer, but I would like to watch one in the UK or Europe, wherever it is, one day. Get drunk with the fans. Yeah. Oh, it's wild, dude. I'm sure it's wild. Yeah, no, it's definitely wild, but uh, obviously... The, there you go. There's some geography for you guys. Yeah. Uh, but we appreciate you guys so much for joining us for another episode of Compas on the Beat. Don't forget to check out Compas on the Beat merch.com. Don't forget to check out Compas on the Beat.com uh, to find all your info on Compas on the Beat. Don't forget to check out Compas on the Beat. Uh, don't forget to check out What's Up Bulls. Don't forget, if we get to 1K, you are going on a lunch date with Dan and Dago. He put his hand uh, up. I think so Bert wants to go too. Uh, so uh, that'll be some be great there. stuff there. Uh, Vic and uh, Gilbert have you covered on all things Rams with House of Horns Combat Combas you guys have been asking for more content we threw out five new videos for you guys to check out uh, ranging from the Gilbert Tribal Chief to Gilbert ranking his top 10 boxers right now currently uh, some good stuff uh, don't forget to check out everything else on Combas on the Beat uh, Combas, uh, Combas FC it's the Champions League uh, final this weekend we will break that all down uh, hopefully Eddie isn't on one like he was last week. Yeah. He was, he was <laughs> Italia. Uh, but, uh, but we appreciate you guys so much for checking out another episode. Thank you guys. And, uh, don't forget to comment, subscribe, uh, like comment, subscribe, be a compa, tell a compa about what the compas are doing. But for the time being, Gilbert, sabes que? Vámonos. Yeah. One more note. Fernando, what an awesome shirt. I love it. Keep rocking that shirt. On that note, ya nos vamos. Pues, vámonos.